Hey guys, Pro here at VIP Outdoors. And today we are back in the kitchen after spring bear season. Uh, we're fortunate enough to get a nice spring bear there. And what I wanna talk about today, um, I'll go over to the, in today's video, is how to can spring bear in particular, but canning game meat in general. Uh, so when we were at camp this year, my buddy Austin, uh, who is very much into the outdoors, very much into the food aspect of the outdoors, just like myself, brought some canned bear meat from the bear he had shot last spring on our trip. And I'll tell you what, it was absolutely phenomenal. And when I say phenomenal, it wasn't like we had good tasting bear that still tastes like bear. I would venture to say I could have put this in front of anybody and anybody would have ate it. And not only ate it, they would have enjoyed it. So I'm gonna try to replicate what Austin did there. It's a very simple process. Uh, Austin, I appreciate you giving me the motivation to do it because this can be a little, a little bit of an intimidation um, or intimidating when it comes to canning any type of gaming. So let's go and get rock and rolling, guys. Let's start with the star of the show. It's going to be our spring bear here. So this is gonna be from start to finish, guys, so bear with me here. No pun intended, bear, get it? Anyways, it just came to me, hilarious, right? Old people jokes. All right, so I'm gonna take my front quarter here. I uh, got a little bit of earth left on them. I'm gonna go ahead and get that cleaned up. So when I field dress bear, what I generally do is I determine if it's gonna be a heavy load or heavier load. And I can still manage a heavy load. The heavier loads is when I start pulling the bone out of them in the field. In this case, I had my kiddo with me. It was already late at night and I was just gonna to tough through it. So I left the bone in. You can still there to see there's a little bit of earth left on there. But I also leave that exterior layer of silver skin. I get as close to the hide as I possibly can where you almost see the little black pores on the underside. And that silver skin on this side or little fat barrier uh, is just that it's a little natural barrier. So that way when you get home, you could just start trimming that away and a lot of that earth comes with it. Just like that. And it cleans it up really nice. Having a nice sharp knife always helps. And this, I feel like I'm skinning the animal all over again, just in a controlled environment. But it's a good way to make sure you keep that game nice and clean before you cube it up and put it in jars. So I'll tell you a quick little story about this bear. You know, he's not the biggest bear I've ever shot. I'd consider him to be an average bear, if you will. But I would say to date, this is probably one of, if not the most special animal I've ever shot. And the reason it's so special for me is because my kiddo was with me. And not only was my kiddo with me, my oldest son, who's 11, this is the first time he and I have been on just together. No one else, no buddies there, no nothing, just he and I. And we got up at four in the morning and we put some serious work in. And I ended up shooting this bear after missing a bear about 30 minutes before it got dark on us. Okay, so the last, I'm talking the 11th hour, 
of legal shooting light there. And the most enjoyable part was watching my kiddo go from four in the morning all day long, hike those roads to get to unit to unit to unit and watch him push through it. I knew he was tired, but he never said he was tired. Um, he just wanted more. He's like, dad, I want to see a bear. Dad, I want to see a bear. Dad, I want to see a bear. And that was his motivation throughout the day. Uh, I made it as comfortable as I possibly could for him, but at the end of the day, he had to put in the work and he had to mentally prepare himself and mentally want to be there, and he did. And when I shot this bear, I knew that we were gonna hike in on this bear in the dark. And I knew I was gonna clean him up in the dark and I knew we were gonna hike out in the dark. I didn't know how my kiddo was gonna handle that. Once my kiddo watched this bear get hit, there was no question of, dad, do we come back later? Do we come back in the light? He instantly put his backpack down. He went reaches for his headlamp. He's like, dad, let's get our headlamps on and go get him. And I watched my kid at that point go from a little kid to a young man. And when you could create that situation or share that situation with a young outdoorsman, young outdoors woman, um, that's a pretty special moment. And I knew at that time, he's all in. He's, he is game on now. Uh, and just presenting the time and the opportunity for your child or someone that you're mentoring to grow and not force them into it, but when they're ready, watch them take that leap and there's nothing like it. And for that reason, this bear is just super special to me. Um, as I'm cutting this up and talking to you guys, look what I just found. That is the tip on a Hornady 230 grain A tip. That's pretty cool. I'm saving that guy. Anyways, and that's another reason we cut these up, guys. Um, but let's get back to Bear Cannon. Now that I got all of my meat nice and cubed up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with quart jars. And you're just going to fill those up to where you leave about, oh, probably about an inch on the top of that. Push it down in there, get it nice and compact. This is gonna render down, and in rendering down, it is gonna shrink a little bit. Now, I say pack it down, but you know, don't overpack it, if that makes sense. So, as long as there's no room, there's a little bit of room there, a little bit of room there at the bottom, not too big of a deal. I might even put one more piece in there. Important that you keep the rim of the jar nice and clean. If it's, it doesn't clean, or I'm sorry, if you get something on there, no big deal. Just take a paper towel and wipe it off. Okay, now that we got the bear all cubed up and put into our quart sized jars, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in each one. Now this is where things go a little sideways on people from my understanding. Um, you can over salt it very, very easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with just a little bit and then you can always add more. So I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon of just good old fashioned Morton's kosher salt here. And that's half a teaspoon in each one. I'm gonna take my lids, put them on there. Just hand tighten them guys, no need for anything crazy. You don't gotta show off your uh, pickle jar opening skills here. I'm gonna go ahead and take them over to the pressure cooker. I already have the pressure cooker going here. And I got a kind of a little bit of a simmer there. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my jars, put them in there, and the reason I get it going before anything is so I could start my timer right away instead of letting things come up to temperature. So I uh, let it simmer there just to get the water rolling. When you put the jars in there, you want to make sure that they're not touching each other nor touching the side of the pressure cooker. Get my lid put on. Locker tight. Now what we're looking for, so what's gonna happen are a few different things. Number one, this pressure shell is gonna poop, it's gonna pop up, okay? Uh, that's gonna help keep our, our, or let us know when we have pressure in the, the cooker. And we have this guy right here, which you can already see little steam coming out, but that's gonna be our regulator. And then this here is gonna let us know how many pounds of pressure we have in there. We're gonna be shooting for about 13 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. Again, that's 13 pounds for 90 minutes on these quart size jars. So we got the pressure cooker up and going. I'm at about 14 there. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I keep it down at 13, 14. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fiddle with my heat a little bit until I get it to the right temperature. Right on guys, so 90 minutes in the pressure cooker at 13 to 14 pounds of pressure. Remember I put about three or four quarts of water in there. What happened is our pressure gauge came up all the way and just sustained at 13, 14 pounds. After my 90 minutes, I brought it outside and put it on my camp chef here. When I got out here, what I did is I took my tongs and I took off this valve here. And you have to be very careful when you take that out, take that off, excuse me, because steam will come shooting out of there. And what that's going to do is that's going to relieve your pressure inside of your canister. This little button will pop down and that means you have light enough pressure to open the top. So when you open the top to your pressure cooker, you want to be very careful that you control the way the steam goes. So what I do when I twist it off, I tip the lid away from me. That way the steam goes away from me. Okay, right, so tip the lid away. And see how the steam kind of goes away from me there? Because that steam can be very, very dangerous. Then what we're going to do, reach in there. Grab our crank can bear, bring it out. You're going to see all those natural juices in there are still bubbling. The bear's still cooking. And when you pull this out to enjoy it for a meal, what you're going to have is the consistency of pot roast. I'll tell you, I was very intimidated when I thought about doing this. But again, after my buddy Austin did it told me about it told me how easy it was i had to share it with you guys because in all honesty it is very very good um it's beyond edible it's actually good my wife's shaking her head right now but <laughs> she hasn't tried it yet so anyways guys that's how you can your spring bear meat uh, here at vip outdoors leave any questions down in the comments